I'm making roasted red pepper today and I'm going to show you how to make it in a gas oven. The first thing about which kind of red peppers you're going to roast is to look at whether it has four sides. So I have three peppers here. You notice how this one has four sides? They're going to be easier to turn and because we're going to be broiling these. Here's another one with four sides. All right. But here's what I'm not going to do. This one only has three sides, so it'll be harder to get an even broil. Um, so I'm going to set that one aside, and we're only going to do these two. And all you need to do is rinse them off and um, take the sticker off, if there's a sticker. And you can leave this on, and I'll show you what we're going to do next. I'm going to set my stove to broil, and on my stove I just press the broil button, and then I press up for high, because I have a low and a high. And I'm going to do high, and then I'm going to show you where I put the rack in the oven. In my oven, I actually have three racks, but I have five places to put them. So my top rack here, I'm going to put on the second thing down, and then I have the flame going already. You can see that. And then I'm going to put the now rinsed and dried off red peppers on a small, doesn't have to be very big, cookie sheet and um, put them in the center right under the flame. And you just have to make sure that the cookie sheet fits. If your cookie sheet is longer than this, oops, sorry, if your cookie sheet is longer than this, you can turn it sideways. But um, my flame goes from the front to the back, so I'm putting the red peppers right under. And the first time I broil them is going to take the longest. So I'm going to set a timer, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So for this first one, I'm going to set the timer for actually five minutes. I'm going to check it in four. But the first time around, the first side takes the longest. And then we'll take a look, and if they're looking good, we'll turn them over to the next side. Or if they're not, we'll add another minute. Well, five minutes are up, but apparently that wasn't enough time. <laughs> so I'm going to add, actually, I'm going to switch the two uh, peppers, because the one in the back is really getting more heat than the one in the front, because it's taller. And I'm going to add two more minutes. Okay, things are moving along a little better now. I get two minutes. So now I'm just going to turn them a quarter turn. And even though that last time took seven minutes, this next time shouldn't take quite as long. So I'm going to turn them and I'm going to set the timer. I'm going to set it for five again, but um, then I'm going to check it at four. Okay? This time they went five minutes. It's okay if they get blackened. It'll just help the skin come up faster later. And I'm um, turning them one more. Okay, get them centered. And this time I'm doing four minutes. They're doing good. One more turn. And sometimes if they're a little tilted, like this one, I'll put it a little off to the side. And this time, I'm only going to give it three minutes. All right, now I'm going to pull these out and see if sometimes the first side doesn't look so great after I look it all over. And, you know, this first one in the back still needs a little bit. And I'm thinking that the bottoms of these are going to need something. So I'm just going to turn mine over and bring it to the side and pop it in there for another two minutes. All right, they are done. I'm going to show you what we're going to do now. I found that the best place to put the um, red peppers while they um, what do I want to say, sweat off their skin is in um, a casserole dish like this with a glass lid 
Some people put them in paper bags. You know what? That's okay, but it's not great. So I'm going to put it in here. If you have a casserole dish but you don't have a glass lid, I would suggest covering it with foil tightly. And then I'm going to let it sit here for at least an hour. Now, um, I don't want them to cool down completely because the skins, if they're too cool, will first come apart and then adhere back onto the red pepper. So I want them to get to the point where they're just warm. So I'll show you what to do when they're sufficiently cooled off where they're not too hot to touch. The peppers have cooled down enough now. So the thing that you want to do now is pull off the skin and get rid of it. And uh, also get rid of the seeds. Now, I used to make, make a big mistake years ago when I made these, and a friend of mine corrected me. I used to rinse them to get the seeds off, but that gets rid of all the great flavor, too. And then, when I stored them in the refrigerator, sometimes I was having problems with them where they would go bad too fast. So, I don't rinse them anymore. I'll shake off the seeds. Like here we have some seeds and I'll just hold them over the sink and shake them off. But then I'll leave them in their juices inside um, this dish. And I'll either store it in this dish or sometimes I transfer it from here and store it in a different dish. By getting them to the point where you broil them, where they get slightly blackened on the outside, the skins will peel off really easily. So the hardest part is getting rid of all these little pieces of, um, of seed. So you see I have some seeds here and I'm just holding it over the sink off camera a little bit so, and just pulling them off. And then if you need to, you can rinse your hands. Um, and you might end up with some seeds in the bottom of the dish, but you can either strain those out or you can leave them and just shake them off later when you use these. Now I have another friend who takes the um, slices about this big without the skin, without the seeds, and she'll put them in freezer bags and freeze them because she'll make a lot at once. Um, actually, she doesn't. She makes them on her outdoor grill. Um, that's why she can make a lot at once. You saw I can only make about two or three in my gas oven. So here I have another one, and I'm getting the seeds to be minimal anyway. And then um, here I have this one. So again, pulling out the skin is very easy. Pulls right off. Sometimes the skin around the, the bottom or the top is a little challenging to pull off, but eventually you can. If you need to use a knife to do that, you can. Then I'm just pulling the stem out. That pulled a lot of seeds out. And then I'm pulling off sections. That one's pretty clean. This one has some seeds, so I'm going to shake them over the over the sink. Pull off another section. This has a couple seeds, not too many. And let's see here. Put some extra skins off of there. And then I have one last one here. <clears throat> some extra skin at the top. So I do have, I'm seeing some seeds in here and I'm, I'm just going to shake them off, but I'm not going to get rid of all of them because I do have some in the bottom of the bowl and I don't want to rinse away all that good juice. So, um, and I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to store it in this bowl, I'm not going to freeze any of them. So I want to pick up the camera so you can see how they look. See? You can serve them on sandwiches. You can slice them up and toss them in a salad. They're so good. They'll last um, a few days. Um, 
But if you have a family, they'll eat these up pretty fast.